Hey guys, welcome back to another video lesson from Ross Medical Lectures. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about Clostridium botulinum. And my name is Chania Rose Jacob. Before we begin, if this is your first time in our channel and watching our video, please subscribe to our channel below and make sure that you hit the bell icon so that you will be notified as soon as our new video lessons become available to you guys. I really truly value your subscriptions, likes, comments that you guys leave because they really go a long way to help support the channel. And so for that, I do want to really thank you guys. The slides based on this lecture and many medical flashcards are available in my Instagram page. The link of my Insta page is given in the description box. Let's move on to the topic. Clostridium botulinum. Clostridium botulinum is a gram-positive bacteria or gram-positive bacilli that take the purple color on gram staining. And it is a rod-shaped bacteria. It has subterminal spores. The term is derived from the Latin word botulus, meaning sausage, as poorly cooked sausages were be associated with food poisoning. It's anaerobic, that is, oxygen is doesn't require for its survival. It's widely distributed as saprophyte in the soil, animal manure, vegetables, and sea mud. Next, let's move on to the pathogenesis. Here you can see the microscopic appearance of this bacteria over here and when we talk about the pathogenesis, it is non-inversive type. Its pathogenesis is due to the production of powerful neurotoxin called botulinum toxin. It is the most potent toxin in the world that is lethal to the mankind. Botulinum toxin is a virulent factor of this bacteria. Botulinum toxin or Bt is a 150-kilodalton zinc-dependent protein which consisting of a 100-kilodalton heavy chain and a 50-kilodalton light chain. This 50-kilodalton light chain is serotype specific and can be typed into 8 serotypes. Serotypes A, B, C1, C2, D, E, F and G. Among these 8 serotypes, A, B and E cause human disease. Most severe is serotype A. Except serotype C2, all other serotypes produce neurotoxin, whereas C2 produce enterotoxin. Bt types C and D are bacteriophage coded. Let's see how Bt different from other exotoxins. We know it is produced intracellularly but not secreted. This toxin appears outside only after the autolysis of the bacterial cell. This toxin is synthesized initially as a non-toxic protoxin. Protoxin is nothing but a chemical compound that only become a toxin after it is altered in some way. Here, this protoxin requires trypsin or other proteolytic enzymes to convert it into active form. This botulinum toxin is responsible for flaccid paralysis. Next, let's move on to the mechanism of action of botulinum toxin. We know the presynaptic nerve endings contain membranous vesicle which contain the neurotransmitters like acetylcholine. Neuronal stimulation and membrane depolarization trigger a localized entry of calcium ions. This calcium ion inflex in turn initiates a chain of signaling events that drives the fusion of vesicle with the target membrane. This process of fusion is facilitated by Snyre complex. This core Snyre complex is formed by 4 alpha helix contributed by synaptobrevin, syntaxin, SNAP25, and synaptotagmin which serves as a calcium sensor and closely regulate the snare sipping. The primary role of snare protein is to mediate vesicle fusion, that is the fusion of vesicle with the target membrane. It's about snare protein. Come back to our point. Here, when the vesicle get fused, it secretes acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. The acetylcholine molecules diffuse across the synaptic junction and bind directly to the specific receptors on the muscle, which leading to the muscle contraction. It's a normal mechanism. Let's see what happened here due to this toxin. When the botulinum neurotoxin enters the nerve cell via accept to mediated endocytosis, the toxin remains housed in a membranous vesicle inside the cell. 
Soon after the light chain which contain the zinc dependent protease escape into the cytosol where it begin to cleave the snare protein which is essential for the membrane fusion and acetylcholine release. The proteolytic cleavage of the snare protein by botulinum neurotoxin thus disturbs the release of acetylcholine leading directly to the denervation and muscle relaxation and flaccid paralysis. Since this toxin causes flaccid paralysis, this can be used for the treatment of spasmodic conditions such as strabismus, blepharospasm, and myoclonus. S spasmodic condition means the condition where muscular contraction is lost. Strabismus means the disorder in which the eyes do not look in the exactly the same direction at the same time. It can be because of nerve injury or dis dis dysfunction of the muscles controlling the eye. Blepharospasm means the uncontrolled squeezing or twinching of the eyelid. Myoclonus means the muscle jerks, which is a sudden involuntary muscle jerk, shake or spasm. So, botulinum toxin can be used for the treatment of these conditions. Other than Clostridium botulinum, the botulinum toxin is produced by other Clostridia such as Clostridium butyricum, Clostridial argentinans. When we talk about the recovery, the blocking of acetylcholine is permanent, but the action is short-lasting as the recovery occurs in 2-4 to four months once the new terminal axon sprout. Axon sprouting is a process where fine nerve processes sprouts or grow out from the intact axons to re innovate the denovated muscle fibers. Thereby, the sprouting sustains the nerve supply to the muscles and in turn the ability to move. Spores of this bacteria do not produce toxins because it requires spore germination which occur in the anaerobic atmosphere. Spores do not normally germinate in adult intestine, however, may germinate in the intestine of infants. Let's move on to the clinical manifestations. We already discussed that botulinum toxin blocks the secretion of acetylcholine. The manifestation of botulism are due to the decreased acetylcholine in the cranial nerve and parasympathetic nerve terminals. The common symptoms include the first one diplopia, dysphasia and dysarthria. Diplopia means the double vision, means seeing two images of an object. Dysphasia means a condition that affects your ability to produce and understand spoken language. Dysarthria is a speech disorder which occurs when the muscles you use for speech are weak or you have difficulty in controlling them. Second symptom include the descending symmetric flaccid paralysis of voluntary muscles. Third one is decreased deep tendon reflexes. The fourth one is constipation and the fifth one is respiratory muscle paralysis which may lead to death. There is no sensory or cognitive deficits. Cognitive deficits means there will be no problem related to mental process and decision making. Next, let's move. Next, let's learn about the types of botulism, mainly five types, foodborne botulism, wound botulism, infant botulism, adult intestinal botulism, etriogenic botulism. First, let's see how foodborne botulism occurs. It results from the consumption of food contaminated with preformed botulinum toxin. The most common source of this foodborne botulism is homemade canned food. Most cases are sporadic and outbreaks are rare. Sporadic means the foodborne botulism occur at irregular intervals or in a few places which is in scattered or isolated manner. Second type of botulism is wound botulism. Like the name, it results from the contamination of wound with Clostridium botulinum spores. It presents like foodborne botulism except of gastrointestinal features. Third type of botulism is infant botulism. Infant botulism results from ingestion of contaminated food, usually honey with spores of Clostridium botulinum. We already discussed that the bacterial spores can germinate in intestine of infants. So in infants, the spores can germinate and release the toxin. Manifestations in the infants include inability to suck and swallow, weakened voice, 
ptosis that is a drooping of upper eyelid due to the paralysis or disease or as a congenital condition floppy neck and extreme weakness hence it is also called floppy child syndrome it's a self limiting condition which means an illness or condition which will either resolve on its own or has no long term harmful effect on a person's health because it can be managed by supportive care and assisted feeding but rarely it can be turned into a fatal condition due to respiratory failure and because sometime it can progress to generalized flaccidity fourth fourth type of botulism is adult intestinal botulism it is a rare condition seen in the patients with suppressed normal flora where the colonized clostridial spores may germinate producing toxin adult intestinal botulism is rare because the spores do not normally germinate in the adult intestine fifth type of botulism is atrogenic botulism it results from the injection of overdose of the toxins while used for the therapeutic purpose it's about clinical manifestation next let's move on to the laboratory diagnosis for the diagnosis of the botulism we should isolate the bacilli and after that we should demonstrate the toxin we should demonstrate the presence of this particular toxin for the confirmation of diagnosis first let's discuss about the isolation of the bacilli on gram staining or smear made from the suspected food or feces reveals that the gram positive non capsulated bacilli with sub terminal oval bulging spores this bacteria is mortal by peritrichate flagella isolation using culture method can be performed on the blood agar or robertson's cooked meat broth or rcm broth in blood agar colonies are large irregular semi transparent hemolytic with fimbriated border in rcm broth the clostridium botulinum a b and f are proteolytic and turn the meat particles to black in color and there will be the production of foul odor in rcm broth the clostridium botulinum c d and e are saccharolytic and it turn the meat particles to pink in color growth growth of the bacteria on the culture media may be confirmed by gram staining and biochemical test serotyping is done with type specific anti sera after isolation of the bacilli the next step is toxic demonstration or mouse biopsy the toxin can be detected in specimens or in the samples of ingested food in toxin demonstration we should inject the specimen into mouse if the specimen contain botulinum toxin the mouse develop the paralysis in 48 hours which can be inhibited by pre administration of specific handy toxin the sensitivity of mouse biopsy varies inversely with the time elapsed between onset of symptoms and sample collection how we treat the clostridium botulinum manifestations if the patient develop respiratory paralysis meticulous sentency case support like mechanical ventilation is needed botulinum antitoxin should be administered immediately on the clinical suspicion without waiting for laboratory confirmation because once the botulinum toxin bind to the nerve endings antitoxin has no role so we should administer antitoxin as soon as possible after clinical suspicion earlier the administration of antitoxin better is the cure rate because antitoxin can neutralize the unbound free toxin molecules we know there are five type of botulism in case of wound botulism suspected wound and abscesses should be clean debrided and drained promptly when we talk about the antibiotics the clostridium botulinum is susceptible to penicillin but the role of antibiotics has not been established it's about today's video guys please subscribe my channel and if you like my video please like it drop a comment and share it with your friends thank you guys take care